Hey, Owen here, and today I'm going to be building Meng's World War II's Sherman kit. Studio Rockervan provided me with this kit for free, however they have not paid me or told me what to do or say. Before starting I washed all the parts in warm soapy water with a splash of vinegar. The suspension was easy to assemble with only four parts and the wheels are left free to rotate. I repeated the process for the opposite side. The lower hull slotted together nicely with no need for glue as this is a snap together kit. The drive wheels are held on by pegs which allow them to rotate freely. The upper hull snapped in place without a problem. Small parts, such as the headlights, were pressed into their slots and I later took the hull apart and glued them in place from inside to avoid making a mess and hold them securely. I had to be very careful not to snap the headlight guards, which were the flimsiest parts in the kit, and they were a little difficult to slide on. Thankfully, I didn't break them. The turret was easily assembled and included movable parts, such as the gun and the commander's hatches. The rubber band tracks didn't need to be joined and slipped on easily. They allow for all of the wheels to turn. I gave the whole model a base coat of Humbrol 86 light olive, thinned to a ratio of roughly one part water to seven parts paint. Notice that I removed the aerial on the turret so that I didn't snap it off when painting. After three thin coats of Humbrol 86, I had a consistent base colour. I wanted to get a cartoon style, brush painted look to the tank like that on the box art, so I mixed some white and yellow into the olive colour to make a lighter shade. With a smaller brush, I applied this to the upper surfaces of the model, not making any attempt to blend it with the base colour. For more information on brush painting scale models, check the link to my video in the description and in the cards. Once this had dried, I mixed an even lighter olive colour, and with an even smaller brush, applied this only to the upper edges and surfaces of the model to create more contrast. After this I mixed an even lighter olive colour and applied this to the most extreme upper surfaces and edges to create highlights. Finally I wanted to create more shadows, so I mixed Humbrol 86 with some blue and applied this to the areas which light wouldn't reach as easily such as under the turret and the lower surfaces of the hull. I painted the tyres with a dark grey colour, thin to a ratio, as usual, of roughly one part water to seven parts paint. Watered down PVA glue was applied to the areas of the model where the decals would be placed, as the semi-gloss finish it leaves prevents the decals from silvering. The decals were all well printed and a good thickness. I held them in warm water for about 12 seconds and then applied them with microset decal solution. For more information, check out my video on how to apply decals. There's a link in the description and in the cards.
After the decals had dried, I painted light grey onto the lower halves of them to tie them in with the painting style of the rest of the tank. After a coat of matte varnish to seal the decals, the tracks were reattached and with that the model was complete. So overall I think this is a really cool little Sherman kit. It was a joy to build, all the parts just snapped together perfectly, it was great. The decals were really well printed and applied very nicely and the painting I found was a good challenge for me. It felt a bit different to try and do it um, with the shading and stuff. It felt more like I was painting a picture than a model and I loved doing that, it was just a bit different. The tracks you may have noticed I didn't paint because they rotate. I thought that the paint would probably come off if that happened and I quite liked how they looked anyway so I thought I might as well not bother. The keen viewer may have noticed that I forgot to reattach the aerial. Um, well done if you did spot that. I'd recommend this kit to anyone because it's just a fun little weekend project and at the end of it you have a cool looking ornament that was brilliant fun to build. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.